What's up collectors, this is Parlay J here with you today. And on today's episode, we are gonna talk about my top five survival tactics for getting the best possible deal when buying cards on eBay. Now, there are a lot more tactics that I use when I purchase cards on eBay, but these are the five most important, especially if you're new to the game and you just wanna buy some cards and maybe you wanna resell them, resell them. Um, it's really important to take this kind of stuff into consideration so that you get the best deal possible because at the end of the day, you want to buy low and sell high, right? Also, if you're collecting just to keep it, you still wanna buy low, so these will apply to you too. So let's get right into it. Tactic number one, when on eBay, do not use the buy it now feature. Now, using the buy it now feature, for me, out of the question when you're buying PSA graded cards. Why? Because typically sellers know that a purchaser is going to try to negotiate them down. So there's one of two things that they build into the price. One, they either build in the negotiation amount or they're just taking a shot and if it doesn't sell, they'll come back and they'll lower the price anyway. Or two, what they wanna do is try to find the sucker or the person who doesn't know or doesn't care about the value, just needs a card, sees it out there, wants the quick hit, hits the button and gets it. And all of those are fine, but if you're trying to buy cards and you wanna maximize your value, I say for PSA, for any kind of graded card, definitely stay away from the buy it now. Now, on the flip side, if you're into buying non-graded or loose as we call it cards, buy it now is not terrible and actually sometimes can be a good strategy because those card prices are typically a lot lower than your graded cards, which have kind of like a multiple built into their sell price already because once it's graded, that's it. It's the be all end all. When you buy a loose card, there's still that chance, the roll of the dice that maybe it will become a 10, maybe it won't become a 10. So that's factored into the price um, and typically sellers are aware of that and take that into consideration. So when you're buying graded cards, stay away from the buy it now please, pretty please. All right, number two, look up the sales history of that card. When you are going to purchase a card, try not to buy it on knee-jerk reaction. Why? Because you may be over, over paying for that card. If you acquaint yourself with the sales history of that card, and I'm talking going back at least two years, you can get a sense of if you're in the kind of wheelhouse of a good deal or if you're way out of the wheelhouse of a good deal or maybe you're in this territory where it's a phenomenal deal and you just had no idea but looking at the sales history is a big big deal now there's a lot of tools that you can use to get sales history one you can go straight to ebay there's an option to see sold uh, whenever you do a search for a product there's filters on the side on the left side if you're on desktop or on the top right if you're on your mobile you can pick the sold and completed filter, and that will show you the last two months, approximately two or three months of history of that particular card. Now, of course, the search algorithm uh, matters here because you may search for, let's say, um, Felix Hernandez rookie, and you'll get tops, you'll get Bowman, you'll get graded, you'll get ungraded. So the more specific your search term is, the more impactful that history search is gonna be for you, determining which card is the right price for you to buy at. So a couple places that you can find this history at, obviously eBay, um, another great one is called Card Snoop. So if you Google cardsnoop.com, that's another great one that actually shows you not only history um, further back than eBay shows, but it also shows you uh, the sale price when offers were made and accepted, which eBay does not do. Um, another great one is PWCC Marketplace. That is another uh, very nice chronicle for history tracking and they have really nice charts and graphs on there as well. Um, and then lastly, PSA, if you're going for your PSA graded cards. So a lot of resources and I will definitely do a separate video highlighting each of those and walking you through them from my computer. But for now, that is number two, look up sales history. Number three, be aware of the time of year when you're purchasing. What do I mean by that? If you are purchasing during baseball season, chances are the prices will be higher than if it is not during baseball season. If you are purchasing during the World Series, during the playoffs, typically around April when people start getting back into the swing of baseball and getting excited again, prices elevate. Certain players as the year goes on, 
prices elevate if they're playing well. They could also decline if they're not playing well or they get injured or something happens to them. Um, but make sure you are present in what time of year it is when you are making your purchase. The best time of the year to purchase is obviously in the off season and in the winter months. When people are focusing on football and the Super Bowl and hockey and basketball, then a little bit of the attention comes away from baseball. You can slide in there and make better deals. So be aware of the time of year when you are purchasing. Number four, don't be afraid to make offers. What I typically do is when I search for a card that I'm really interested in buying and I've done the research, I will actually filter it down to the type as accepting offers. Why? Because I want to get those buy it nows out of there. Maybe I don't have the patience to wait for an auction to come to the end. Although waiting until the auction, uh, waiting until the very end of the an auction is another great way to buy cards, which I'll get into. But when I filter it down for the ones that accept offers, right then and there, I am now opening myself up to being able to negotiate the card price. So chances are that the card price already has a multiple built into the asking price. So by doing the offer feature, now I can kind of get that dialogue going with the seller to see if there's any flexibility or any room to negotiate that price down a little bit. Now, taking into consideration all the things that I just said, you want to know about the history. You want to know what time of year you're in, because those are things that you can use in order to potentially negotiate the price down. There's a lot of other factors um, that make a seller open to the idea of negotiating the price down. Um, read any book on negotiation and all of those principles apply here, but you want to be aware and you want to be in a position where you can actually make an offer. Now, sometimes I make offers on cards that are 50% um, of the actual ask price, which some people will get offended by that. However, there are some people, like I said, that have that price already factored in and they're willing to come down. So throw the offer out there for every 10, you might get one where there's a seller that's interested in it. And if you find that one seller that's interested in it, look at what else they have for sale, because they might have some other cards that are in your kind of focus range that you are interested in. And if they're willing to take the price down on a single card, they may be even more willing to take the price down on a group of cards if you buy in bulk. You also get a lot of the benefits of that, of combining shipping, and then you save money on that. So it's a win-win all around. But the key is make sure that it's a mutually beneficial deal. Um, you obviously wanna save some money, but you also wanna give the seller some sort of incentive to agree to selling it for less, whether it's them clearing their inventory in a season, an off season, or whether it's you buying in bulk from them. Sellers are willing to negotiate. You just have to find them. So don't be afraid to make those offers. Don't be afraid to be declined on offers. For every 10, maybe you'll get one and that's okay. I typically have my offer outs maxed out on eBay at any given time. Um, and that translates into success for me. So put it out there. And the worst thing that could happen is they say no and you move on. And then there's always the potential of going back and forth with offers. eBay offers you the option of up to five. And so if you go through that process, you may actually meet somewhere in the middle on what you offered and what the seller is willing to go to. So do not be afraid to use the offer function. Just make sure it's an offer that you're ready and willing to accept. Don't offer something way out of your range and then get caught by surprise that they accept it and now you're kind of screwed and you didn't have the money to pay for it. Make sure it's something you can afford. Number five and the final tactic. When you're in negotiations with a seller, for God's sakes, just be nice. A lot of people, when they enter in negotiations with a seller, they can be a keyboard warrior and it's a lot easier to just be mean and crass and short when you're negotiating on eBay through eBay messages than it is if it's somebody who's right in front of you. So my approach, I try to empathize with the person on the other end. I wanna be nice about it. I don't want to say take it or leave it bro or you'll never sell this card and by the same token when you put an offer out there you're definitely going to get sellers that react negatively and take it uh, take offense to it and start to justify why you're crazy and why it's ridiculous for them to accept any kind of offer and yada 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 whatever the case may be just be nice in the negotiation process a little kindness in this process can actually go a long way Back to what I said, what's in it for me? If you have that dialogue, you kind of can connect like you're two normal people trying to find a mutually beneficial deal here. Chances are you will find that middle ground and you will be able to get the card at a purchase price that is suitable to you 
that you can then hold on to it for and flip it at more hopefully later, or just be happy that you got a little less than what the asking price was. So those are my top five ways for getting the best possible deal on eBay. More videos to come on eBay purchasing and purchasing across other websites in general. Um, so stay tuned for those. Guys, if you really thought that these were helpful, I wanna hear from you. Comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. What are your tactics? Do you buy on eBay? Do you buy it now? Do you do offers? What is the craziest back and forth that you've ever been involved in? And what's your biggest win, among other things? But I hope this helped you. Put it into practice. If you have any questions, comment them below and I will absolutely answer them. Thanks again, guys, for joining. This is Parlay J. Take care, spike your hair. See you next time.